Now Joseph could not restrain himself in the presence of all who stood before him. So he called out, Remove everyone from before me. Thus no one remained with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He cried in a loud voice, Egypt heard, and Pharaoh's household heard. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him because they were shocked before him. Shalom. This week we are reading Parshat Vayigash. What an amazing drama, what pathos, what emotional power. The story of Yosef's revelation, his reunion with his brothers. The story just contains every element of this unspeakable drama, but yet we know that because the Torah has a timeless message for every generation, because it exists on so many levels, there's much more to this story than just the family reunion. Now, our sages tell us, they share with us a very amazing tradition, and they tell us that the brothers, upon having to deal with this paradigm shift of their reality, they were more than simply shocked. The words in Hebrew state that they were not able to answer Yosef ki nivhalu mi panav. Nivhalu mi panav, we can define that as they were shocked, they were alarmed, they were even terrified. But our sages tell us something a little bit more cryptic. They tell us that actually they were shocked to death. They tell us that the brothers actually died from this incredible trauma. Their souls departed from them, and God made a miracle and resuscitated them. So their souls were returned to them. And as ever, it behooves us to try and understand the depth, the meaning, the message for us and our generation of this account, because a midrashic insight, like the one that we just shared, is not just some sort of tale. It is certainly not a, a fairy tale or some sort of uh, made-up idea. There is a powerful psychological, spiritual insight that our sages of blessed memory are employing in order to drive home to us in our generation a timeless lesson that we can derive from this incident. And I'd like to speculate about what this particular lesson might mean for us and how we can understand it. Again, everything in our understanding of the weekly Torah portion is how it relates to us, what the message is for our lives. And on that level, we understand that in addition to the dramatic irony and the incredible forces at work, both those that separated Yosef from his father's house and those that united him, and those forces that were at work in order for Yosef to be placed in a situation where he would be able to facilitate the survival of Egypt and his brothers and the world. Still, there is another level altogether. And the metaphor of Yosef and his brothers is about a number of things. It's about recognition. And it has been until now about the inability to recognize that which is directly in front of us. It's also been about misunderstanding and not appreciating the singularity and the singular contribution that each one of us has to make towards redemption. And it's also about identity, because Yosef never changed, despite his rise to power. And indeed, our sages also comment on the fact that as opposed to Moshe, who did not merit to be buried in the land of Israel, Yosef, indeed, merited to be buried in the land of Israel solely because he said, and we recall this at the end of Parshat Vayeshev, he said, I was kidnapped from the land of the Hebrews. He did not deny who he was. He was an Ivri, which of course we know means someone from the other side, not an outsider, but another sider. But that isn't even the point. Yosef's estrangement 
and his ultimate reunion with his brothers is a metaphor for everything that the nation of Israel has to go through, all of us, on the way towards reconciliation with ourselves and with each other and ultimately with our Father in Heaven, which will lead towards the great redemption. So what does it mean, this idea that ki nifhalumi panav, the brothers actually died, their souls departed from them. They couldn't take the shock, the terror of the moment of the revelation of Yosef's presence. There is a very beautiful and moving insight that our sages share with us on these words, I am Joseph. I am Joseph. And indeed, it is a metaphor for much, much more than the reunion of Yosef and his brothers. Our sages tell us in the Midrash, at the time that the Holy One, blessed be He, will reveal His Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, upon Israel, He cannot do it all at once because they would not be able to withstand that goodness. So rather, he has to do it very slowly. He cannot do it all at once. And actually, the Midrash says, this can be derived from our very verse. and can be understood how much more so from the incident of Yosef, because when Yosef made his brothers aware of who he was, they could not answer him, and indeed their souls departed from them. And our sages continue and say, how much more so when the Holy One, blessed be He, will reveal His Shekhinah to Israel. And thus, what does He do? He reveals Himself slowly, slowly. One little flash, glimpse, illumination, at a time. So the scenario, the incredibly set stage of the moving, powerful reconciliation, reunion of Yosef and his brothers is actually a metaphor for the ultimate revelation of the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, the connection with godliness and true identity upon Israel and how does God do this? Just as it happened with Yosef's brothers, we understand it cannot be all at once. It comes in little doses. And this is the beauty of the metaphor of Yosef and his brothers, because everything that we go through throughout the whole process of our history, the whole timeline, every aspect of all of our strivings and all of our affairs and those that even that appear to be mundane and disconnected from God, they're all small doses of the revelation of the Shekhinah. Thus, everything that the Jewish people goes through in modern times, the establishment of the State of Israel, the, the churning and the yearning and the travail and the disappointments and the successes of everything that we go through as a people in this world is a measured dose that we can take slowly, slowly of the revelation of the Shekhinah. So, this past week, Hanukkah, here in the land of Israel, a discovery of major archaeological significance was made just a small, tiny item, a, a clay seal that was part of the administrative process of bringing an offering in the Holy Temple that bears the words, pure to God, was discovered and announced here in Jerusalem. What has this small clay seal to do with the metaphor of Joseph's reunion and revelation to his brothers? Everything at a time when Israel's enemies deny the Jewish connection to the city of Jerusalem and the Holy Temple, at a time when they deny that there ever was a temple and that the Jewish people have no connection to this city and this land, God beckons to us. Just a little 
dosage at a time. It's too much otherwise, the light. And he shows us that he's still here and that we are still going from the past through the present to the future, to the time of the redemption and the fulfillment of our destiny. And like Yosef and his brothers, the challenge that we have as we receive the measured dosages of the revelation of the light of the Shekhinah in the small amounts that we can take so that our souls don't depart, the challenge that we have, like Yosef and his brothers, is to be able to recognize and see what is in front of us so that we can learn from the lessons of the Torah and see the participation and the contribution of every aspect of our nation and every aspect of our history and that which we have to go through in order to come to our fulfillment in the time of the Great Redemption.